know, obviously it uh, wasn't something I, I, I saw coming and, and um, wasn't really prepared to, to make this move. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you, you got to adapt and present and overcome. And, and this is exactly what I'm doing is overcoming these obstacles and, and I'm ready for a new challenge and, uh, you know, playing a new province and, and uh, hopefully bringing a, a great cup to Toronto. So looking forward to the opportunity and looking forward to your, your questions here. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, if we could just limit it to one question to one follow-up, please. We'll go first to Frank Ziccarelli, Toronto Sun. Oh, yeah. Hey, Andrew. Uh, I know you're not in Toronto, but welcome to Toronto. Has it has it sunk in that you're in Argo? Yeah, I, th I think I think today, um, you know, it really, really has. I've been kind of looking at a uh, place to live and, and uh, you know, talking to some friends that are in Toronto already that are that are you know from here or from from other places that uh, uh i've met them through i've got a couple of buddies i played junior with in, in in toronto as well so just kind of uh talking with people and and you know looking at different options and and really just uh putting my putting my my, my brain and, and and energy into this is actually happening so um when when i signed the contract uh you know uh, via email um you know it didn't really sink in but uh it def it's definitely sinking in now and and uh again i'm, I'm really excited about the opportunity Hey, Andrew, I, I, I don't know you, but I've been around athletes uh, longer than you've been alive. They, they always uh, enjoy playing with a chip on the shoulder. How, how big is that chip on your shoulder today? Um, I mean, I think my, my whole career has kind of been that way. I've always had to prove myself being a Canadian running back coming from junior. Um, you know, when I, when I started off in, in, with the Lions, it was, it was that way when I, you know, when I left the Lions. You know, there was, uh, you know, people thought I was too old at that point, you know, you know, was, you know, my late, my late twenties and, you know, and then, and then just with the split with, uh, with the bombers, I think there's, um, you know, there's a, there's reasoning for what, for why they did what they did. And, um, you know, and, and, you know, there's, I'm sure there's lots of question marks and, and people wondering if I can still um, contribute at a high level and, uh, and do what I do, um, you know, do what I do so well, great in the field. So I'm looking forward to, to proving everyone wrong and, and keeping that chip on my shoulder and, um, like I said, after the year uh, last year, um, I'm really excited about, um, you know, putting my best my best foot forward and having having an amazing year and having one of the best years I've had in my career. Well, thanks for your time, Andrew. All the best. Thank you. Thanks, Zick. We'll go next to Dan Ralph, Canadian Press. Good afternoon, Andrew. Um, I'm wondering, um, as you prepare for your, your, I guess it's your 12th year, um, Coming to a new team, new city, and a new situation, does that sort of give you an invigoration? Or would this would your your mindset still be the same regardless of where you would be? Yeah, I, th I think the biggest thing for myself is is preparing my body, my my mind and soul, you know, before I get to Toronto, making sure that I'm, you know, there's there's no doubt in my mind that I can contribute on the field as at a high level. And then the next part is 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 learning my getting to know my teammates, getting to know my coaches. And being comfortable with them, you know, earning their trust, and and you know, building building you know uh, my my expertise and and uh, my knowledge of the game and and, and building building uh, going forward with them. So those are those are the two things that are really important to me, and and I got to really put my best foot forward to to make sure that I'm going there without without a doubt um, in my mind uh, as far as the physical and mental side of things. And then once I get there, it's going to be with my teammates and my coaches and and getting to know them and. And seeing uh, seeing their vibe and how they do things on a day to day basis, and then really just uh, and just worry about focusing on on you know one day at a time and getting better throughout training camp and and building that trust within the locker room. Um, Andrew, is there a reason why we're talking to you today and and why you're not back in Winnipeg? Can you put your finger on what happened? Um, I I I really can't define it in in one one reason. I think there's accumulation of things, and uh, I mean ultimately, you know, everything happens for a reason, and. Uh, Again, I wasn't wasn't I couldn't imagine myself wearing another jersey, you know, after you know signing with Winnipeg and and you know doing the great things that uh, you know we did together, you know, as myself and the and the team and all my teammates. And but at the end of the day, you know, things happen for a reason. And uh, um, you know, I'm excited for this new opportunity. I'm excited for you know uh, not only on the field but off the field. Um, you know, the different different opportunities in Toronto and and being in that market and. I'm really looking forward to just uh, being part of a great organization, a great, great coaching staff and, and, you know, coming out of the East, you know, and going, going to the great cup. Thanks, Dan. We'll go next to David Morrisuti. Go ahead, David. 
Thank you, Angie, for doing this. Um, just want to get, how do you feel physically? How has this off season been for you? I know you dealt with some injuries last year. Yeah, I mean, I um, I was able to to get my body right, to, uh, you know, for week four uh, this year, and and you know, I played played with uh, some 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 torn ligaments in my knee throughout the season, and um, you know, I was able to kind of get get that rehab, you know, while while focusing on another in injury later in the season, and um, you know, it's uh, it was one of those things where it, it was a tough battle, but uh, you know, I've been kind of I've been rehabbing and training. You know, since since the season's been done, and and you know, I, I feel where I'm at today, um, you know, a lot better than I felt at this point in time in a long in a long time. So I'm really looking forward to, uh, you know, uh, you know, to changing my diet now and and really focusing on uh, the small little details that uh, are going to help me be as strong as possible for for a full 18 game season. And um, again, it's it, this in this business in, in this game, you're always one hit away from from a big injury and. Uh, you can't really control, you know, the outcome of, of each play and, and how it's going to work out. But um, I feel like if, if I'm, you know, in, in the best shape possible and, and you know, my, my mindset's right, then, you know, I'll be able to come in and, and you know, hopefully um, contribute at a high level still and, and, and get, a, get a full 18 games in. But, uh, yeah, I feel, I feel great right now and I'm looking forward. I'm eager and, and excited about uh, this, new, this new opportunity for sure. And just a final one for me. Um, in your conversations with, uh, you know, Pinball and with you know Coach Dinwiddie, what what excites you about this opportunity? How do you kind of see your role here in Toronto? Yeah, I mean they're 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 talking to me about uh, running the ball, you know, downhill, and you know they, didn't, they haven't had a back like that uh, to be able to do that, and you know they got some great backs and and, and already on the roster that uh, you know are more speed guys and they're like scat back style, so. I think um, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna factor in as a one-two punch and you know offset each other and um, you know whatever, whatever role it is um, the, the biggest thing is that they're excited about having me um, you know there there was there was a want factor there um, you know just talking to Pinball on the phone you know just his, his little giggle and his excitement and uh, just appreciate appreciate the the charisma and and um, you know just 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 the way you, you felt very warm and I've never really talked to Pinball before. I mean, obviously, hear lots of great stories, but uh, it just felt like the energies, our energies are matched, and um, you know, our energies were on the on the same page. And I'm really just looking forward to getting to know not only Pimble but the rest of the coaching staff, and uh, you know, just vibing with them and and learning how they tick and how they work, and you know, putting you know my my best foot forward as far as my expertise and and um, you know the veteran veteran leadership that I have, and and helping them you know rally the troops and and being part of something big. Thank you, and welcome to Toronto. Thank you. Thanks, David. We'll go next to Frank Stanici, Canon Frank Live. Long time no see. Good to see How you. you doing? Again. I'm doing well. Right um, I, I, I'd like to I'd like to talk about focus. You know, when it comes to adversity, challenges, opportunities, you come from a team that you went to and helped them, as you have said. I've heard you say about you know raising the level of Winnipeg to winning a championship. So now you you have a whole different set, not bad ones, not good ones, but different. You're coming to a team that doesn't have that many fans, in, you know, in the stands, but offers you great opportunity as far as living and, and maybe after you know playing. Speak to us about the changes and the and and the motivation that you have different here in Toronto and why it's a benefit to you to be here. Well, honestly, I, um, I I really I really embrace the underdog role. I really embrace the the challenges that that come along with that. You know, when um, you know a team's counted out, or you know, um, an individual's you know down the dumps, or it, when, even for myself, I I really like that 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 climb and that and that grind to to turn things around. And uh, you know, Toronto had a very great season last year, and um, you know they're, they're definitely on on the upward scale of, of of turning things around for themselves, and and they were right right, right there, um, you know, is in the playoffs as well too. So I'm um, again, I'm excited to just be a part um, to what all the great things they've already been doing, and adding adding again my expertise and and veteran leadership and and you know the things that I do on the field um, to what they already have, and and just be an extension of of all the great things that they're doing. Um, I always try pride myself of being an impact player, an impact person. You know, if I walk in a room, I want to make an impact, you know, to whoever's around. And um, if I have a conversation with someone, I want to make an impact to them as well. And, and on the field, that doesn't change. I want to make an impact on the field, uh, in the locker room, 
and 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 just keep building off that. So it's not it's not any different. I don't really change. You know, it's not, I'm not going to change who I am or how I approach things. I think the biggest thing is that uh, I'm a lot more mature than I was. You know, in 2016 when I came to this team. Um, you know, and 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 all the great things I did now. And again, every 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 week, every month, every year you have, you get more experience and you learn how to deal with situations in a better way, and and, and attack different uh, personalities and 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 how, and how to how to just get the most out of people. So. Again, I'm really looking forward to to this new opportunity with an already great establishment, our already already great organization, and you know, hopefully that comes with more wins, more fans, and more excitement around the Argos, and and ultimately just winning games and getting the playoffs and, and going to the ultimate dance. Well, for those of us here in the media, we're we're adjusting from time to time. We do all these you know interviews with players. Has it been something for you that you've considered a kind of odd? Do you almost feel like you're being traded to the Calgary Stampeders? No, I don't. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. I, uh, I, I don't even know how to answer that question, but uh, it doesn't feel like that at all. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. Uh, we'll go next to Darren Bombing. Go ahead, Darren. <clears throat> I mean, um, yeah, there's there's so many so many uh, things that I I feel like. I mean, coming to the stadium, just seeing the the lot, the walk, the people walking in, and and you know, at the, just just the stadium in, in general, the environment at IG Field, I think I'll miss the most. Um, you know, I just just felt you know felt like home. Um, you know, having my friends and family, you know, at every single game, and you know, going to you know my my going to Nicolino's after the game, and just you know feeling like I'm walking into my living room. You know, just just little things like that. It's. Uh, um, you know, just just the camaraderie with, with with the team that we had, and and also with the fans. You know, um, became a household name really quickly, and and just really felt you know embedded into uh, what a, what a, what a blue bomber really is, and um, especially on the turnaround and you know following through with what I said I was set out to to do, and um, it just just was a special feeling, a special uh, part of my life, and um, you know it, the whole the, the whole the whole situation I think was. Uh, exactly what I set out to do is a dream come true. And, and, you know, I'm very proud of uh, what I was able to accomplish. I'm proud of the, the relationships and memories I've built with my teammates and coaches. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of what, where, where, where they're at now. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's where you want to be as an organization. And I'm really looking forward to taking all those great things that, uh, you know, I, I was a part of and, and learned along the way and, and trying to, um, you know, establish those things and, and embed those things into another organization that uh, will help us be successful as well. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is just uh, thank you so much for the support, you know, and the love and support, even when things weren't going so well. And, you know, I'm talking about 2019, there was, you know, getting stopped at the grocery store, at the gas station, you know, walking around and people just saying, you know, we got your back and we believe in you and, um, you know, keep your chin up and, um, you know, the, 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 the city just really bleeds blue and gold and, um, um, and, and the people really care about the team. And that's going to be the hardest part is, is just, just having that, you know, um, gas station, grocery store conversation with somebody, you know, and, you know, in a big city like Toronto, I think that's going to be hard to come by. I know when I was in Vancouver, it definitely didn't happen there. So, um, that's the biggest thing that you just miss from, you know, these smaller markets in, in a town, uh, like Winnipeg or Saskatchewan, even that, uh, you know, that the, the fans are just really embedded into the, the fabric of the team. And, um, you know, and, and I just appreciate that so much. So the care, the love and uh, support, um, I miss that. And I just want to thank you, you, fa you the fans, for, for everything you've, you've been through in those cold games, windy games, rainy games, you know, stuck through it and, and really made it a tough place to play. And um, I appreciate everything you guys uh, did for myself and the organization. Thanks, Darren. Uh, we'll go next to Chris O'Leary, CFL. Thanks, hey, Andrew. Um, I, I think you've probably you've been through a lot of ups and downs in your career. I don't know if you've had a week like this past one. I'm just kind of curious how you would describe this past week and, and what it's been like for you to kind of go through the downs of being released and I guess the, the ups now of, of finding a new home. Yeah, it's it's definitely been a roller coaster. Um, I think the, the the hardest part for me was just the unknown. I had no idea where with what was going on with the in regards to the bombers and then you know I, I had some talks you know throughout the window with a couple of teams and you know just kind of realizing you know what, what was going on and then uh, ultimately you know I, I reached out to, to coach P. Costanza and you know thought just just to give a feeler out to, to see if Toronto would be interested and 
um, you know, he got right back to me and, uh, you know, and then next thing I know I was talking to the coach, coach Dimity and, and pinball. So, um, again, I just really felt like I, I was unwanted and there was no, um, you know, I was going to have to just, just go along with, with what they were offering me. And, and, um, and what, I'm talking about the, with the bombers here and, um, and then just, just a lack of communication. Like I said, it was really tough to, tough to swallow. And, and, you know, especially when I felt, you know, like I, I, I'd done so much and, was a part of uh, you know, a lot of the, a lot of great things uh, for, for this team for the last five years. So um, it was down, it was up, it was exciting, it was nervous, and um, you know um, a little bit a little bit scared to be honest with you. And um, one thing I knew throughout this whole thing is that I wanted to continue to play football and I wanted to continue to play football at a high level. And I think honestly, uh, going to Toronto is the best opportunity for me right now. And and again, not only just on the field but off the field and. I'm looking forward to, to all the great people that are over there that are excited to have me. And, uh, you know, that's that's the biggest thing. I'm going to a place that uh, I feel wanted and uh, they're excited about. And, um, you know, that excites me and that gets me going. And so, I mean, uh, yeah, it's definitely been uh, a roller coaster of emotions. And, uh, again, at the end of the day, you know, I kind of can let the dust settle here and take a deep breath. I'm, I'm really just super excited about the, the opportunity and looking forward to it. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Uh, uh, thank you. Thanks, Chris. We'll go next to J.C. Abbott, Three Down Nation. Hey, Andrew. Uh, there's been some some implication that maybe you entered last season with not the best mindset. I think you admitted uh, as much in, in your interview with Paul Friesen. Can you maybe take us inside that season and, and some of the struggles that you faced? Yeah, I mean, um, I mentioned mentioned just, uh, you know, the separation with my wife and, uh, you know, moving right up until training camp. I think I was still moving stuff during training camp. Um, I had an injury um, during 2020 in the summer that uh, um, wasn't really fully healed, I don't think. And uh, so, um, again, I, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an avid hockey player, play basketball, you know, and all those things I wasn't able to do during during the off season um, leading up to that. So I, I didn't, and I didn't, I didn't really have the the mindset or, or my right, right frame of mind to, to get, to get myself into the gym and, and, and work, be working the way I was, I, I was supposed to be. So again, with a, with a small injury coming in and, you know, um, a lingering injury coming in and not being in the best shape, um, you know, I wasn't in horrible shape, but I just wasn't, you know, to, to the standard that I should you know have for myself and, and what the team should have for myself. So, um, but yeah, they kind of led to that. And then, you know, just uh, like I said, I just felt, I felt like I isolated myself a little bit and, um, you know, I came in off the wrong foot and, you know, there's a lot of different motions going on and, um, you know, it, it just, uh, I think there was some definitely mental health things going on with myself and, and, you know, I kind of went into a bit of a hole personally and, and mentally. And um, while I was trying to grind through, you know, getting back in the field, finally getting back in the field and, you know, kind of getting on uh, some momentum and, you know, I think, you know, the game before we were in Edmonton, I was kind of hitting stride again and then boom, we were, we're in, in Edmonton and uh, I'm, I'm back, I'm back on the IR again. And uh, again, it just really took a toll on me and um, something I wasn't used to. And the only, only thing I really felt like I had control of um, throughout that season was, was when I was on the field playing, everything else was just all over the place and um, kind of, kind of spiraling. So, um, you know, when I, when I lost football again, you know, during the season, it was really tough on me and, um, again, just kind of went into that hole again. And, um, but we had, we had a deadline to, to get ready for playoffs and, um, you know, I got, got back in the field and then, you know, the Western final was a great game and then onto the great cup. So, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was a tough season. And, uh, I mean, even after the game, I remember everyone celebrating crazy. I just wanted to sit down and just, you know, just soak it all in. It was, it was a tough year and, um, a lot, a lot, lot of roller coasters and uh, a lot of ups and downs. And, um, I just, uh, I don't want that to ever happen to me again. Uh, you know, it, it was uh, it, it was it was really difficult, and I don't wish that on anyone. So, um, I mean, that's that's ultimately what's really inspiring me this year to make sure that uh, you know I, I'm coming in with the best foot forward. And again, you can't control some of those uncontrollable things, and but um, I don't want to have any regret. And uh, I think last year I had some regret. Not many running backs play at the stage of of their career that that you're in right now, at 35. How much juice do you believe you still have left in the tank? I don't know. I think uh, just pull pull the tape back and, you know, just back in November, you know, so I think I can still do it. Um, 
I think ultimately it's uh, this game has become more mental for me than it is than it is physical. Um, and if I just raise that bar of physicalness, you know, up again, I think, uh, you know, my mind and, and my vision and, and the things that I do well um, help my teammates around me, uh, whether it's communication or, you know, uh, verbal cue or, or, or signals or verbal cues, whatever it is to, to help us all be successful. And, and again, use my veteran leadership that way. Um, I think, you know, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that uh, I'm going to have a su successful year and, and help the team, you know, do great things. Awesome. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. All right. We'll just do a couple quick follow-ups here. Uh, Dan Ralph, Canadian Press. Great. Thank you, Andrew, again. Look, at, is 10,000 something in, on your horizon or do you even look at numbers? Yeah, I mean, the number is a number. So I think um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll celebrate it, you know, uh, if and when I accomplish it. Um, I think the biggest thing is for me is is just coming in week to week and, and contributing and the numbers will take care of themselves. But uh, I think well, I think those things are, 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 you know, awesome to look back when you're done playing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even, even, you know, a lot, a, lot of, a lot of guys like to have, you know, bonuses for a thousand or 500 or whatever it is. I, I don't like to think about having to reach a certain amount of uh, a goal or a number, you know, based on the record or, you know, for a thousand or this and that, those are, those are good goals to have. And I think that if you do the right things, those should be things that you should, you should, you should accomplish regardless. So um, I'm looking at it the same way. And I think if I'm doing the right things right now and in, in, in between the lines and um, um, I'm going to accomplish that. And, and, you know, it's, it, to me, it's already, it's already accomplished in my mind. And I, I think mm -hmm. I'm just going to keep going forward and, and um, you know, and appreciate it later down the line. So uh, it, it is, it is going to be something I'm going to, I'm going to be excited about and, and, uh, and celebrate, but, you know, ultimately, that's not my main goal and main focus. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Uh, we'll do two more. Frank Ziccarelli, Toronto Sun. Hey, Andrew, I don't, I don't know if you're aware of this, but the Argos aren't in Winnipeg this season. Is that good? Is that bad? Or Honestly, does it even I, matter? I had no idea. Um, I, I, someone told me that, uh, like, the day after, and I, I was like, oh, wow, I didn't, I didn't even realize. I didn't, uh, didn't even really focus on that, but... Uh, Honestly, it's it probably would have been a, a tough game for me to just be back in that building wearing other colors. So, um, you know, maybe maybe it's a little uh, maybe a little bit of a bit of a blessing that that's not happening. So, um, but yeah, I, I had no idea at the time, and um, you know, who who knows how the season plays out? Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Thanks, Andrew. Good luck. Thanks. Last question, Frank Stanici. Go ahead, Frank. Um, I, I, I know you know that uh, BMO is a grass field. How do you feel about playing on a grass field half your games, you know? Yeah, I was just talking to Alex about this before uh, we got on, but I'm, I'm really excited about it. I always love playing on that field. It's it's softer and, uh, you know, you get you get you just get a different feel on that grass. And honestly, I think that's going to extend my career, maybe a couple more games, uh, maybe another year just from playing on those, uh, those games at home. So I'm uh, really looking forward to playing on that beautiful grass and, uh, um, you know, it, it, it definitely, definitely uh, bodes well for the knees and joints and stuff. So looking forward to it for sure. Thanks. Good luck. And really, thanks for doing this. And it's really great to see you in uh, double blue. So I'll get a chance to see you more often in person. All right, on. Great to see you too. Thanks. For, uh, thanks for the interview and uh, great talking to you. You're welcome. And thank you. All right. That just about wraps up this press conference. Andrew, thank you so much for your time. Really much appreciated. And thanks to everyone for joining us today. We will see everyone later. Take care. Take care, guys.